Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q3 and 9 month FY24 conference call of Bank of Maharashtra Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. We have with us from the management, Shri A. S. Rajiv, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Shri Ashish Pandey, Executive Director, and Shri Rohit Rishi, Executive Director, and all general managers of the bank. I now hand the conference over to Shri A. S. Rajiv. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yes. Thank you so much. First of all, welcoming all of you to this uh, conference call. Today our research is approved by the Board of Directors. <coughs> we would like to brief the brief of the financial results. This quarter, <coughs> bank was able to reach different kind, different milestones in different areas like operating profit, crossing operating profit of 2,000 crore per quarter, net profit more than 1,000 crore per quarter, ROA above 1.50, that is 1.55, ROE around 25%, cost income ratio lowest of 36%, etc. And in case of operating margin, it is improved to 34.5%, where the net profit margin improved to 18%. This, this net profit of the current quarter is up by 33.61% to 1036 crore as against 775 crore corresponding last quarter. The same is up by 12.58% on sequential basis quarter to quarter. Operating profit has shown a growth of 27.32 on year on year basis to 2012 crore as against 1580 crore in Q3 FI23. The same has improved on quarter to quarter basis by 5%. Net interest income grew by 25% on year on year basis to rupees 2466 crore as against 1980 crore for Q3 FI23. The same is on quarter to quarter basis up by 1.39%. Next revenues, net interest income plus other income for Q3 FI24 improved to 20% from 2,620 crore to 3,146 crore as of Q3 FI24. The same is up by 1.5% on quarter to quarter basis. Cost to income ratio improved to 36.04% as against 39.69% corresponding last quarter. The same was 38.04% quarter under 39.23. Return took 1.55% as against 1.3% Q2 FI23 and 1.374% for Q2 FI24. Return of equity also improved to 24.51% as against 24.4% for Q3 FI23 and 23.25% for Q2 FI24. The total business grew by 18.89% to 4,34,000 crore. Total deposits grow by 18% to 2,46,000 crore. Gross advances increased by 20% to 1,88,670 crore. Series ratio stands at 76.78%. Gross NBA declined to 2.04% and net NBA reduced to 0.22%. Provision coverage ratio improved to 98.4%. CRAR stood at 16.85% of which tier 1 is 12.92%. If we add the current uh, 9 3 quarter profitability, the CRAR stood at above 19%. For 9 months in debt, net profit up by 61% to 2,837 crore as against 1,762 crore for 9 months ended 31 12, 2022. Operating profit has shown a growth of 37% to 5,000 crore 
for 9 months as against 4,244 crore for 9 months 31 12 2022. NIA growth was 31 percent year on year basis for 9 months to 7,237 crores from 5,554 crore. Fee based income increased by 13 percent on year on year basis to 1048 crore for 9 months and 31 12 2023. First income ratio for 9 months ended is 37 percent as against 39 percent corresponding 9 months period. ROA for 9 months is 1.42 as against 1.02 for 9 months. ROE improved to 22.7 percent as against 18.5 percent for 9 months. In case of advances, net advances grown by 21 percent where from RAM sector, retail is grown by 22%, FMSME advances grown by 29% and agriculture grown by 35%. For the current quarter, we have reduced our corporate exposure, that is it was earlier 41.5%, reduced to 39% and thereby increased the RAM sector that much quanta. During the period ended 31st December, the bank has raised equity capital for the 9 months, 1000 crore is reduced, 1000 crore is raised, and tier 2 capital 774 crores. Earlier, whatever the provisions held by the bank, it is continued to hold the provisions of 1200 crore. And for the current quarter, as well as provisioning additional Contingent provision of around 300 to 350 crore bank is made, consequent upon the prevalent agriculture growth and other issues concerned, and uh, revised the guidelines of Investment. investments is applicable from next year. So for that purpose also we have contingent provision of around 1000 crore in case of valuation if it is affected. So these are the main areas. Uh, which are the glands which I wanted to share with you. So, I think that now we can take up uh, question answer session. Yes. Then whatever the query is there, we are ready to reply that. Already we have uploaded the... Uh, uploaded. We have already uploaded the, our uh, 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 presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press a star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Suraj Das from Sundaram Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers. Just two questions, sir. Uh, one uh, on the staff cost. I mean, QOQ, your staff cost has reduced. However, if I see the wage provision, I think that has increased. Earlier, you were uh, providing at something like 55 crores per quarter. This quarter, I think you have provided something like 100 crores. Uh, and also, if I see the GSEG, I mean, that is broadly stable on a QOQ basis. So, just wanted to check, I mean, what has, uh, you know, led to this uh, decline in staff cost? So, <coughs> staff cost, uh, uh, as against, uh, as of now, as per IBA case lines, uh, as of now, it is expecting that around 17% increase in the staff cost for the latest bipartite settlement. As against 17%, I think we have already provided 20 to 22% provision is already made. In addition to regular provisioning, we have for the current quarter, we have made around 150 crore provision we have already made. <coughs> so that is why we have now Last quarter it was not stabilized whether what was the top, what was the rate of increase expected. So that was finalized at 17%. So 
So we have not provided that instead of 75 crores, we have made only 50 crores for the current quarter. That is why the small uh, amount of difference has happened. Okay, but I think sir, last quarter you provided 55 crore uh, on the wage settlement bill. This yes. quarter you have provided something like 100 crores. So that is there is increase, but overall staff cost has decreased. So that is the that was uh, my question. I, I, I will tell you that uh, if you remember that uh, earlier we provided staff cost at the rate of 15 percent, and uh, for two quarter we have made additional per 145 crore. Uh, in addition to that, 15 percent. Now since we raised the settle at 17 percent, so accordingly we have made provision out of 145 to, uh, some amount. When we made a 17 percent, we have taken from the previous quarter. So now the over and above 17 percent, the amount is roughly 100 crore. Additional amount is there. That is why that uh, if you see in Q3 staff cost has come down. Oh, okay, okay, understood, clear. And the uh, next question, the last question, there is increase in the SMA one book. Uh, I think you have mentioned excluding one account. Uh, the book uh, behavior is normal. So just wanted to inquire about that one account. I mean, what has happened there? Is it your sole account or uh, what is the reading there? If you can give some, you know, idea where is, I mean, which sector this account pertains to. Sir, that was a government account. It has already been recovered. It has come out of SMA 1 now. So, as of now, our SMA 1 and 2 percent is 0.15 percent. Today it has come out. Okay. And is this your sold account, sir? No, it's not a sold account. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohan Mandora from Equiris Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, Varshan, sir, thanks for the opportunity. So just uh, taking forward from the SMA 1 question, in one of the slides, the number of accounts in SMA 1 has gone up from around 70 or to 700 odd. Uh, so just want to understand, like, uh, while these are granular accounts, but which sectors are these SMA 1 coming from? What, what you are telling? Again, can you repeat again? Sir, if you look at the presentation, in one of the slides, the number of accounts that are there uh, in SMA 1, that thing has gone up from 70 odd accounts to 700 plus accounts. That we have given the amount. What is the amount? Oh, amount is percentage. Uh, Earlier that was 736, it was the amount, amount, not the number. Ah, so 736 is the amount, okay, okay. So and that was one account which has got recorded and that's where it's a decline, okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Sir, that 7,000 is around one account was there, around 560 crore one account, government carried account was there. So because of the change in the government, there was some delay was there. So now it is clear and now it is not under SMA1. Okay. Sure, sir, sure. And sir, uh, second was that uh, the increase in yield on investments uh, is largely because of the quarterly averages because uh, the investment book declined towards the second of the quarter. Would that understanding be right and that's, that's also the reason for increase in NEMS for the quarter? Yeah, if you see that uh, some of the investors which are carrying low yield, either are matured or we sold out. So it, it has improved the yield and uh, uh, that for last nine months we have added the high yielding securities. So overall it has impact in increasing the yield, yield on investment. That's why it has uh, come up to 6.53 for the quarter. And for uh, 9 months, it is 6.40. Sure. Just to reconfirm, the calculation of yield on investment is on the quarterly average or on the daily average? It is on fortnightly average. Fortnightly average, okay. And sir, uh, if we look at uh, the last 12 months, uh, the AAA rated uh, corporate accounts, that count has almost halved. So which sectors are we uh, uh, exiting these clients from? And what were the reasons for these exits? Yeah, uh, uh, actually it is not, you know, it is, you will also know the, the, which is the competition which is there in the market. Right. So actually, you know, we are very clear in the bank like, you know, which pocket we have to so that we maximize our returns and be safe as well. So that is why if you see the entire portfolio from AAA to the AAA, A and triple B as well. So if you will see that uh, the very cautiously and very prudently and thoughtful less it is being invested. So what happens now? Because since the deposit rate has gone also gone up. So if you are carrying with the same uh, very, uh, very, very competitive terms, then certainly it will hit. 
So it was a very cautious decision to come out. So it is not an exit, I would say, but it is an exit on the commercial terms. Sure, sure. And so lastly, if you can just uh, talk about the new customer acquisition trends in the liability side, like uh, especially on the CASA, what is the new customer acquisition rate? Because in the last three quarters, uh, that number on the absolute basis has been broadly flattish in terms of balances. Uh, see, relative to the CASA, we will give you three points, which are the basic. The first is certainly you may be knowing that around 200 branches we have opened. So we keep our target uh, with all the, you know, last two months before opening a branch, we keep a target of 10 to 15 crore branch opening uh, business right from the day one. That is the first point. Second is the salary account, which we are really targeting uh, very high on a one, one and a half year. So I think that is the second point. Now, third thing is that like CNA and SNA accounts uh, or the, you know, the corporations. So that also with the help of the software integrations because today everybody wants ease of doing business. So we integrate, we have a specific solutions for various corporates. Not only I would say the government corporation, but even in the corporates. So we give so that their entire, the internal, their software is integrated. They need not do anything manually. And uh, the the collections or the MIS and everything is given to them. So actually, these are the these are the three four points, which is uh, giving the accretion in the customer base. So we have run the campaigns as well, almost for the six nine months on addition of the KIF. The KIF means a new customer coming into the bank's fold. So it has good, uh, it has nicely yielded results. That is why you see the customer base has also increased and the the CASA, I would also say, has increased. Sure, sir. Thanks. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Rakesh Kumar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, in the opening remark, you mentioned that, you know, the provisions that we have of 1,200 crore, uh, some portion of it, you know, you are... Uh, holding it to use for this new guideline on the investment uh, valuation classification which came uh, this year and applicable from the April. So can you, uh, so are you anticipating, you know, some provisioning requirement for this investment uh, part uh, because of the new guideline, RBI guideline? Yeah, uh, the, we have made 100 crore provision in respect of the uh, provision on the standard investment. You, you know that the new RBI guidelines on investment uh, has come and it is going to be applicable for 1st April 2024. And some of the issues of, which are constitutional issues and where that we have sought the clarification of RBI. One of the issues is that uh, fair valuation of the recapitalization bond which we got from the government. As per that, uh, it has to be fair valued from the date of allotment. So, Pending that uh, uh, clarification, we have made, uh, prudently we may have made 100, 100 crore provision and uh, once we get the clarification, accordingly we will t uh, uh, take the, uh, we will treat this uh, provision whether to write back or we whether to use it. So, uh, so is this provision a, like in a final or complete amount or, uh, you know, uh, going ahead we would require to make additional provision for the same reason or uh, this 100 crore number what we have done is like kind of a complete number? It is an estimated provision. We cannot say it is a complete provision. But uh, looking to the the uh, investment, investment guidelines, we have made the provision. Okay. And uh, also, also so recapitalization bond which were which are sitting in the banks PSC bank book. Uh, so this this provision is specifically for that, correct, no, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So what is the calculation? If you can slightly elaborate, we are not able to understand. So what is the calculation uh, that you know? As per RBI guidelines, that recapitalization has to be fair valued at the date of allotment. So suppose uh, the government has allotted 100 rupees and the uh, at the time fair uh, market price of such type of bond is. 97, 98 rupees. So then two rupees you have to fair valued and accordingly that value have, uh, the, there would be MTM depreciation. Okay, sir. So in this regard, we have sought clarifying of the RBI because it is under STM securities. So once we get the clarification and there are some other issues, we are ad hoc basis, we have made under provision. 
there is no other provision that is required for the similar for the similar guideline no the, 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 they have given the classification of investment where they have added a new category stps so that we are assessing the that overall uh, the security where it will go because you have to do reclassification but based on that roughly we have been 100 crore provision that is the thing understood sir thanks uh, thanks so much sir thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of rakshak jain from kotak securities please go ahead sir you are not audible can you speak loudly no still not audible क्वेश्चन <laughs> right so what you said uh, is that the bank was providing uh, at higher rates than 15% and now right now you are you, you are providing at 17% but over and above you have 100 rupee 100 crores of extra provision is that understanding right yes okay so sir when you were providing at the beginning of the quarter did you say that you were providing at 20 22% Uh, assuming 20, 22% kind of a hike. No, at that time uh, that uh, we were not not knowing what would be the hike. So on that uh, uh, estimated basis, we we provided. Uh, so uh, 15% we uh, we are expecting wage revision, and out uh, over and above 145 crore uh, we provided because uh, there was no certainty whether it would be 15% or more. Now that uh, it is clear that uh, wage revision would be settled around 17%. That's why we are telling that 70% we have provided. Overall, if you see the taking to account additional charge, it is 22%. Still, it might be a keeping 20 to 22% provision. Higher provision. And uh, if it is finalized at 17 to 18%, we will take it, and the remaining we will write back. Right, sure. So, sir, when we say 17% wage hike, does it also mean that? you know you are providing as the 17% but you have you also provided adequately on the pension provisions for this is only for the non pension part of the wage bill now this is actually total load actually so amount we have already provided including pension including pension if any kind of arrears it is already provided right but the load for pension can be different right from 17 17 is the median number And so 17 even if 20 comes also we don't have any issue because we kept it 22 percent. Right. So this will take care of your pension provisions also the entire retirement yes. liability yes. which will go up because of this hike. Yes, and their and their pension provision because of various if any other retirement benefits like gratuity or leave and cashment all this we have considered. Right, and have you taken actual uh, uh, broad park numbers also, or this is? Yes, sir. Every quarter, this? every quarter we are taking actual valuation, and uh, based upon actual valuation only making the provision, not on estimated basis. It is based on actual valuation. Sure, and sir, out of your total staff, uh, how many would be on, let us say, uh, old pension and new pension? I mean. Keep to a joint before, I think 2003 or something. Six thousand is the uh, the uh, staff which are eligible for the old pension. Huh? Okay, so six thousand people are eligible for old pension, right? Six thousand. Well, I think three thousand eight hundred is the correct figure who are uh, eligible for the old pension. Okay, and out of total staff, also, sir, if you if you put roughly thirteen thousand four hundred. Okay, so your proportion of old 
staff is actually relatively low, much lower than industry. Is that understanding right, sir? I mean, 33 percent kind of a number. But some impact will come for pensioners also, no? Already existing pensioners, around the 13 to 14 thousand pensioners are there. There also some growth will come, not corresponding to the existing employees. Right, right. But this uh, 300. 11 crore, which is the cumulative provisions that we have, this will take care of all these retirement uh, liabilities, right? Is that is that understanding right? Yes, yes. It will take care and we expect that some amount will come back as right back. Right. Understood. So that is clear. The second thing is, sir, on this uh, investment book and what you mentioned that 100 crores provisioning that we are carrying on, on contingent kind of a basis. Um, on this zero coupon bond, I thought that, you know, uh, during divergence, right, last last year when we had made this uh, instrument as a part of our capital, the, the discounted value was already, we had knocked down our CET one by that amount, right? So we would have taken that amount into PNL. So why again the provision? Uh, we, we have not received any zero coupon bond. So whatever the recurrence bond uh, we receive from government, it is carrying coupon. Okay. So in, in our case, it is not applicable. Right. Understood. So okay. So that is a different instrument. Okay. And sir, then in this quarter also, we see that out of total loan loss provisions of 977 or 943 crores, we still have 250 crores of standard assets provisioning. Yes. What is that? And you know, what is the thought uh, process behind creating uh, this uh, standard assets provisioning or restructured provisions? I mean, w what is the PCR that we have on restructured? And could this be a, a recurring thing because we still have, uh, you know, PCR, uh, uh, standard restructured loans? So, restructured provision is already, 400 to 450 crore restructured provision is already in our books. And uh, in addition to that, 200 crore additional provision we have kept for agriculture loans. If anything, as a condition agriculture, drought and other areas, if it happens, and if everything is okay, we can write back the provision. Otherwise, we have kept as a cushion for agriculture loans. Okay, sorry, sir, so your restructured standard advance is 2700. 2750. How much is the restructured provisions that we have? Standard assets restructured provisions. Uh, it is uh, roughly 450 crore. And if you see the uh, where we can especially pay, that is the MSME. The figure is roughly 387 crore. 378. Uh. 378 crore. So what we are expecting maybe 5 percent slip. So uh, 15 to 20 crore uh, may slip. Again, that uh, the balance sheet has more than a, a adequate cushion since we are holding the restructuring provision of 450 crores. Right. So, sir, this 450 crores, this provision on a loan book of, let's say, 2,700 in which is roughly, uh, what, 20 percent, right? So, 16 percent. How high can it go? I mean, over the next two, three, four quarters, would you aspire for a... 40%, 50% kind of a provisioning or 15% is where you think you are decently provided? Going forward, we will see the trend. Actually, it is sufficient provision what we feel like. Uh, but uh, if we uh, uh, see the trend accordingly, we can make the provision. Initially, we made 10% provision when the restructuring was roughly 4000 plus crore. And we did not reverse even though that restructuring uh, quantum has come now. Uh, so my only conclusion is that we have a net NPA at 22 basis point and we have a credit cost which is 120 basis point. Right, so I don't know, I mean uh, this looks very very weird that uh, you know last quarter we had 23 basis point net NPA and this quarter we have 120 basis point credit cost. So, uh, it's complete, sir. Yeah, no, so what I'm saying, sir, what is the outer limit? So, part of this is, of course, you are maintaining PCR and, uh, you know, whatever is between you are providing as much as 85, 90 percent. But uh, on the restructuring, what would be your comfortable uh, 
provisioning level. Right now we are in the say 15, 16 percent. Okay. Uh, uh, see that we are actually at the lowest level of uh, net NPA now. Going forward, we don't uh, find that uh, we'll improve the same. The challenge is to maintain that level from 0.20 to 0.25. So, uh, uh, not much provision will be required. Um, subject to we are controlling our slippages also. And the standard positions we are keeping as a cushion, uh, if something happens, especially in agriculture sector, sir told you about that. So, accordingly, we are going. Especially the total contingent provisions that we have is 1200 crores COVID provisions plus 450 crores of restructured standard assets provision. Is that right? I mean, or this is a part of that only? It is right. So, so the total provision is 1200 plus 450, right? Or? Yes, yes. So, 1650 is the total standard assets provision that we have. And if you see that we are talking about credit cost, uh, the if uh, you see as far I don't know if we may, we we are making provision, we require only the credit cost would be below 0.5. Since uh, right. to maintain a net NPA below 1%, 0.22, .2, whatever slippage 100% you have to provide. So that's right. why the credit cost is. This is not because of that. Ki, uh, as far I now we require higher provisioning. Right. No, no. That is clear, sir. That I read you. We need not provide too much, uh, mm. but still that is still coming. Uh, okay, and last question, sir. Why are we, I mean, the tax rate which we pay is very, very minuscule this quarter as well as last quarter. So, any any details there? Yeah. So, uh, this is not the uh, actual income tax liability because we, we have been carrying the uh, carrying, uh, loss, uh, losses, income tax losses is roughly 8,000 crore. So, uh, the whatever that profit, taxable profit is coming, it is netted against that. So, there is no actual income tax liability. It is uh, simply uh, the reversal of uh, the DTA because when you are writing off uh, out of the disallowed problem, you have to write off. So, a small portion has come in the form of DTA reversal. So, actual income tax liability is nil. So, for full year, what would be your tax? Liability tax rate. If you see the actual income tax liability for this year would be zero because of the carrying forward losses. And next year, sir, would that be normal or that you still have some benefit which is still left? It will continue in next year. I think it is to continue for another two years, sir, because the carry forward loss is around 8,000 to 5,000 crore carry forward loss is there. Okay. So, another two years tax liability will be zero. Okay. Understood. And last question, sir. Our loan to deposit ratio, right, is around 75-76%. Is there any, <laughs> what do you say, is there any uh, informal guidelines from RBI to, you know, to, to, to keep LDR within a certain threshold or uh, or you think that is only, I mean, right now you are 73, 75 range, but is there any guideline from RBI to uh, keep a tab on the LDR ratio across banks? There is no guidelines. We, we have not received any guidelines. Okay. Understood, sir. Yeah, that is all from my side, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Niharika from Anand Rati. Please go ahead. Thank you, madam. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashok Ajmela from Ajkon Global. Please go ahead. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Of course, I am there with you for a very, very long time. Uh, sir, uh, compliments to you for uh, yet another good set of numbers to the entire team of Bank of Maharashtra. And I start with the your award uh, slide. You know, you have been receiving several awards. You know, Best Public Sector Bank Award, National MSME Award, Technology Award, Best Nationalized Bank in Agriculture, Retail Bank. So, compliments to the entire team, sir. So, my sir, uh, I, I got some broad, uh, in fact, uh, uh, macro questions and some observation and why to seek your comments. 
that's our our growth in terms of uh, you take it business or or advances uh, has been i think over the period has been slowed down if you don't compare the corresponding year last year but if you look at only 9 months of this year and only one quarter is left now so when we were expecting the total business of this bank you know crossing almost uh, you know the landmark of this 5 lakh crore i think we are lagging behind a lot on that uh, even credit growth in the entire 9 months is only 7.7% and just 3% in the last quarter uh, of course we have achieved good results good net profit operating profit good name uh, this is one uh, that what is your plan to continue to grow at the pace at which you are growing over last one and a half to two two and a half years which is keeping bank of maharashtra stand alone amongst the entire banking fraternity so this is one a uh, second one is our kasa also which used to be 55 56% is sliding you know from march 53.38% to 50.71% to now 50.19% so there also uh, what is our strategy i mean i are we uh going to keep some later targets of the kasa also so these are the first is my first question these are the broad uh, kind of observations if i can get the answer of that yes <clears throat> what you are uh, observed is correct earlier bank was growing at the level of 24 25% mainly one was that one of, one, of, one of the reason was the low base was one of the reason the growth rate was very high and second point is that where the sectoral growth if you see that now the base has come to almost 2 lakh crore and slightly base is uh, increased so it may be difficult for the banks to at the level of 24 25% growth rate and even if it is growing the quality credit has to be considered second point is the pricing so when the growth rate is coming we are giving more bottom line than the uh, top line as far as growth is concerned so if you see the current growth, current quarter also our ram sector uh, last quarter our ram sector was uh, 58% and the corporate sector was almost 42% within one quarter we have changed the strategy to providing that 62% ram and uh, that, uh, balance 38% the uh, corporate sector so 3 to 4% corporate sector we have reduced mainly because of the pricing but our mr pandey ji has told that correctly why we have not gone for triple rated accounts because when it is coming for pricing triple rated and uh, how corporate loans the pricing is very sensitive when the deposit rates are increasing uh, bulk deposit rates are increasing at the level of 7.5% to 7.80 level with the present pricing of the uh, deposit with the triple rated with the lowest cost it will not nothing will contribute to the bottom line of the bank so the uh, board also is all, already uh, uh, advised that instead of going for rate is of course it is required secondary but the growth rate of advances we will continue to be around the 18 to 20% that is possible because we have already sold some of the ibpc in the market it is there that will come back for the fourth quarter and the deposit will grow at the 13 to 14 percent growth rate that is number one and regarding casa you are well aware that when the interest the market interest rate is increasing it is an industry practice that industry all the industrial constituents the casa rate has come to 3 to 4 percent reduction as observed so the same thing is happened in case of bank of maharashtra also but we could able to sustain at the level of 50 percent that we will try to continue with the 50% level so for that 50 to 51% kasa level the main one of the reason is that we have not grown much in uh, high cost bulk deposits so when the bulk deposit is increasing it will impact the bottom line so our strategy is to keep the bottom line intact and the profitability margin nim you can see that the last quarter most of the banks are affecting the nim and nia growth we could able to increase the nim by 5 to 6 basis point so at least even if in future we may not be able to increase too much but we have to be in the level of 3.8 to 3.4 thousand range we have to continue with the nim that is the strategy adopted by the board i think 
my answer is clear no yes sir yes sir definitely sir my second question is on the the initiative on the information technology this slide you have given and also the digital footprint of the bank uh, yes. i would just like to know uh, i mean uh, real business wise like if you look at the entire delivery of the business whether the credit or collections or credit card in this thing how much actually has become operational and in terms of some value number some some figures uh, that yes. red only spend today on the digital front uh, here mr pandey will briefly explain the digital initiative as you shall be used to do that Uh, uh actually uh, this uh, related to the digital uh, digital products and stps see uh, we will tell you that it is not only only and only business it is something very directly to business and something very indirectly to business so what we are doing in our bank is the all the digital initiatives are actually having the three pillars one is the direct business which are stp like now we have done stp in the mudra we have done pm suniti papl so almost uh, around 15 to 17 stps we have lost so one is in the business second which we have done is in the operation side on the i would say like video kyc which is also on the business both on asset and liability the second is on the operation side and the third one is on the services side so like the nomination which we have done which is totally stp now even the third party we have done with the five Uh, products in the health insurance non life insurance and life insurance so basically what we are doing is that whenever a digital initiatives we talk about we talk about in the three areas one is the business second is the operations and third is the compliance side so like the uh, robotic process automation so as of now we have already implemented 27 which is live in bank of maharashtra and another 10 which we are going to make live in another 10 days So around 35, 36 will be live in this, and we aspire to cross 50 by by 15th of March. So what we mean to say on a direct business impact? Yes, we have launched very recently PAPL uh, on a very risk mitigation basis, on the POC basis as well. So within 10 days we could do almost I think 10 crore of a business within the POC level. I am saying not on the public level. The second one is certainly you know which is also on the talk. that on the on the asset quality side so what we observed when pm sonidhi we launched which is totally on the real good algorithm and a back testing with the with the other parameters the our sma book on the vis a vis comparison is very less so this is the second outcome of that and where the people are not involved in the video kyc we have crossed almost 125 to 150 accounts per day so i think and the quality the average balance is very good so what i just wanted to give you a color is that the business is coming we are actually monitoring and now the things are implemented so on another down the line 6 months you will see and our digital business zone which is created for only digital journeys is having the internal aspiration of around 3 to 4000 crore in a year crore in a year thank you The next question is from the line of Gaurav Sharma from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, thank you for doing this, Anand. Just a small question on fee-based income. So, uh, we are just uh, observing a decline in fees of fee-based income uh, sequentially by 10 percent. So, just wanted to understand the reason on this matter. We have taken some cautious call as we have some receipts and directives from our regulator to go slow on insurance or mutual fund based income because I think uh, in insurance recently the EIM guidelines have revised and many of the insurers have said that they have increased the commission on their actors. So just wanted to understand the reason for this decline. Sir. Declining fees in fees. Uh, declining in the fees in income is the three aspects was there. One is regarding. fee income uh, connected with advances so some one area where during the quarter we have reduced the corporate advances by 3% of the total advances and thereby slight impact it happened regarding processing charges processing fees all these things and some of the sanctions we have given already there that is it to happen that will happen during the current quarter so this current quarter whatever shortage is there will come next quarter second point is that regarding profit and sale of in investments 
This is the one area where slightly has come down because of the uh, benchmark rates are for stand and we have not much uh, profit on sale is not happened. Third one is uh, our prudential return of accounts recovery. So that also there is a scope is there. So that some of the one or two accounts are there that is in the final stage and thereby the fee based income will improve. There is no such a regulatory guideline regarding commission or like that nothing is come to us. So that fee based income is a point to point basis now which is 67% growth is there. So at least a double digit growth we are expecting in the next quarter. On this sir. And sir, on this uh, 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 sir, sorry, sir, the sir, commission. You are sounding a little muffled. I request you to please use the handset while you are speaking, sir. Uh, am I clear now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. Sir, on this uh, revision of expense of management guidance by insurance, so uh, have you seen increase in your commission cost from the insurance company? What exactly? Commission on insurance. Yeah, uh, see, the commission on insurance is uh, actually increasing uh, because of the two costs. Because there is a earlier there was a, some cap sort of things, and the bank has also now taken, as you would have seen the earlier press release. So two more, we one more we have taken in life, one more we have taken in non-life, and uh, one in the uh, in the health sector. So I think the business is increasing and secondly as you mature in the life insurance business, so if persistency is good in our bank which is good, so persistency the renewal commission which accrues to you as well as the new commission, first year premium I would say. So I think both put together and not only this, the bank is also doing various other tie-ups and other things. So on the third party I would say the, the posture and the color is good. Understood. Uh, those are my questions, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Deepak Podar from Sapphire Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'm audible, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, I just wanted to understand on your credit cost. I mean, uh, you did mention that uh, we are providing majority of uh, the slippage during the quarter in that particular quarter itself. But I think in the past we did uh, spoke about maybe credit cost or normalized credit cost of 1% plus minus somewhere 10 basis point. Whereas current credit cost is much higher than that. So how do we see the credit cost going forward? Hmm. See, uh, credit cost, uh, we want to keep it up to 1% only. If, it is, if you see the additional provisions which we are doing, that is why the credit cost is going up. Uh, otherwise, it is uh, below 1% only that we are keeping as a cushion uh, as and when required. Okay. So, 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 so going forward, we expect credit cost to be uh, around 1% rate. Yes. Okay. And, and that factors in into this uh, um, the policy of, I mean, providing majority of uh, uh, in the provision uh, bucket, uh, uh, the, the one that would have slipped during the quarter. Hmm. Uh, that uh, if you see that net NPI is 0 0.22, almost zero. So right. that slippage you have to provide almost 100 percent if you want to keep ratio uh, that and net NPI within that bank. So uh, going forward, that uh, with this our credit monitoring and slippage will come down, and uh, recovery uh, some of the, the recovery will take care of some of the that slippage. So uh, even we provide 100 percent of uh, that uh, slip there, credit cost will further come down. Okay. But 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 we do intend to I mean provide about 95 to 100 percent of. Yes yes. Know. If you want to maintain ratio between 0 0.20 to 0 0.25, almost you have to provide everything. Okay. Fair enough. And in terms of ROA, how do we see that? I mean, currently this quarter ROA of 1.55 percent is that sustainable? And going forward, uh, what sort of ROA range we might be looking at? Yes, uh, we are expecting that it, it should be around the uh, 1.50 level now. 1.5 percent. Yes. FI 25 as well. I mean next year. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm, fair enough. I think uh, uh, those were my, uh, my two questions. Uh, that, that's it from my side. All the very best to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of M B Mahesh from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Just uh, three questions uh, on the on slide number 19 with respect to cost of deposits. Uh, if you could just kind of tell us uh, 
when this ratio would uh, probably peak at current levels of interest rates? I think the markets expect that this uh, interest rate peak it will may continue for up to this year and then, but by next the second quarter of next year, I think it starts declining. So the same level of uh, cost of deposits or slightly it may increase by five to ten basis point next to one or two quarter, and then chances of that uh, it may come down. So you think at uh, the next quarter we can see a print of around four point five percent? Is it? Yes, another five to ten basis point cost of deposit may go up quarterly basis. Okay, and uh, sir, what have you done on the on the the changes with respect to the NBFC guidelines? Uh, sorry, risk weighted assets for uh, NBFCs and unsecured loans. Uh, what have you done uh, to your borrowers? How so have you? The pricing part we have taken care because the uh, risk adjusted. Uh, capital based pricing we have done and uh, in case of NBFCs the pricing is passed on to NBFCs and uh, one or two one or two NBFCs could not able to take up so that uh, we have not sanctioned that so the pricing we have passed on to them sorry uh, if I were to go to slide 20 uh, currently your yields are at about 9.01 on the yield on advances side where yes. do you see this kind of going after making these adjustments so that will come around the 9.10 level, quarterly basis. Okay. Yes. And uh, sir, on the second question with respect to the, uh, what is the impact on account of the, the, the recent guidelines on the CET one side? Regarding uh, increase in the rates of NBFCs as well as personal loans? Yeah. Yes, it was around the 46 basis points. 46 prices. Okay. My, my final question, uh, uh, there has been some conversation in the media that the government has been asking you to step up recovery on the stickier corporate loans which has been there from the last cycle. Uh, do you see any kind of strong visibility of that happening through? Uh, do you see some uh, any more recovery pending on that previous NPL cycle or are we largely done with it? Yes. yes. Uh, See, uh, this now large corporates, uh, more or less, as far as our bank uh, bank is concerned, are uh, uh, mostly uh, very less remain. But uh, twelve accounts are now poised in NARCL. Uh, they are large accounts, so of uh, one thousand six hundred crore. So we expect that uh, some sale to NARCL uh, will acquire those uh, in the current quarter. So that reduction will happen in large corporate. Okay. Perfect. Done. No, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Omkar from Vasuki India Fund. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. So uh, uh, last uh, uh, two weeks back we saw that uh, we reduced the interest rate on home loans and auto loans by around 15 basis points. Uh, while other banks have been, you know, increasing their MCLR in last few months. So, you know, some uh, uh, light can you throw on this? Yes, last week we have reduced, uh, that is only for a specific bucket of civil score of above 800 and above. So, the aim, aim of the bank is to increase, at present we have uh, almost 10% under this bucket, a uh, civil score of 800 and above. So, our aim is to increase under this bucket to 10 to 20 percentage, if possible. So, so that, uh, uh, it was uh, without risk-free assets we have to create under this housing loan portfolio. That is the purpose of that. Thank you, sir. That's yes. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sushil Choksi from Indus Equity Advisors. Please go ahead. Congratulations on a very stable result and a good guidance. So what's your view on the outlook on Bank of Maharashtra and banking in view of the current deposit scramble which is happening, the CD ratio, there is talk about RBI monitoring C, uh, the banks where CD ratios are high and what's your outlook on the treasury market? Sir, as far as CD ratio is concerned, uh, we have not received any guidance from RBI at what level we have to maintain. And going forward, we look to maintain it around 76 to 78 percent. And resources also will be mobilized as far as CASA is concerned. We were told in the beginning that when interest rates rise, there is a tendency for fixed deposits to grow and CASA percentages to come down. 
I think we have stabilized around 50%. We'll continue to have that level going forward. And where do you see uh, CASA coming from? Existing uh, catchment or some new initiative? No, we have opened around 200 new branches. That also is a source of CASA. Then we have SNA accounts, CNA accounts, we have government deposits, we have high net worth individuals. There is steady growth from all the sources of CASA. Okay, and your outlook on treasury? Yeah. Uh, treasury that uh, if, if you see the treasury, the yield has improved. So uh, earlier it, it, the yield has gone down below 6%. Now we uh, are hovering around 6.50 uh, to 53. And that increasing trend will uh, continue. You you can expect that further uh, uh, that increase in yield in the uh, March, March quarter. And uh, any, any forecast on where tenure would be at March end? My view is that ki, uh, it will hover uh, around uh, between 7.10 to 7.25. So in view of that, how are you seeing the credit market and your treasury performing? Uh, we will continue to uh, see the opportunity in lending market because as the, uh, our editor told, we want to keep our CD2 are comfortable at 78%. So since that yield on treasury on the comparatively on lower side and we are having excess SLR securities, so you may see some switch over from investment to lending in order to have a better yield. You are not expecting major treasury profits in current quarter as well as in you know that treasury profit, it will, it will depend on the market. So, uh, so once the opportunity comes, definitely we will launch the trading profit. We will try to keep trade off between the yield as well as trading profit. But uh, as uh, I told that uh, since the treasury is not uh, not having uh, yield as compared to lending, and uh, there is excess investment there, that excess is enough. We'll try to um, uh, switch over to lending in order to have a pattern. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. In order to have a better name. Hey, Rajesh sir, one, one question to you. Uh, bank has done exceedingly well in your tenure and your management team. What is one thing which you would like to do in this bank in 24? 24, I think uh, we uh, further the, we, our immediate aim is to cross the 5 lakh crore business that which will happen during this 24. Second thing is high level of digitization that is already more than 1000 crore. CapEx is already, uh, uh, budget is already given. So, uh, and uh, BCG we have already appointed, a consultant is already there in the bank for the past uh, 6 months and uh, most of the area where digitization is happening, end and, and STP is already done. By 24, I think this will be fully digitized bank. That is the expectation. And to achieve all the goals, digital expenditure, all that is possible, what have we done towards human resource and transformation of the bank? Entire uh, top human, level and the middle yeah, level. Human and Human resource, uh, as of now, 13,400. And uh, this year we have opened, and every year we used to open more than 200 branches. Have, and we are recruiting almost 15,500 to 1,600 employees per year. Our so officers as well as clerical cadre, we are recruiting that. That will sufficient to take care. So human resource also we are doing well, and the recruitment process under. Uh, scale 2, scale 3 level or lateral recruitment we are doing. So human uh, HR area is fully taken care and other than trainings also we are giving, there is a uh, good number of trainings and all the chief manager and above, all the uh, chief manager and above uh, employees are this year has been trained in top 3 IIM institute or top 3 management institute and that kind of trainings we are uh, bringing down up to scale 1 level. That also parallelly we are doing that. So HR area we will improve further and the productivity you know that this is one of the productivity area bank is 
the number one in in case of total business per employee is concerned. So we will continue to do that. So the bank is future ready for digital and future ready with human resource, both on integration basis. That is what I should conclude. Yes. Thank you, sir, and all the best for 24. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as a last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Sri A S Rajiv for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Sir, uh, thank you so much for having uh, uh, given an opportunity to share with you all of you, and please continue the support. Continue to support the bank, and I am sure that this bank is having a bright future like this quarter and next quarter again. This kind, this kind of results will continue. I assure you that. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Bank of Maharashtra Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.